I'm Kevin Beach, one of the original founders of Mexican Gulf Fishing Company. I'm Captain Billy Wells, co-owner of the Mexican Gulf Fishing Company. And this is our story. Mexican Gulf Fishing Company is a group of charter captains that my partner and I put together over the years that we, we felt did a very good job and kind of had the same ideas as us. Hey, good job, Eddie! <laughs> there, there's so many variables you can't control. You can't control the weather. Sometimes fish just don't bite, doesn't matter what you do. The things you can control are your attitude, your equipment, and your boat. Make sure your stuff is top notch, clean, and you act in a professional manner. And that's kind of what we pride ourselves on at Mexican Gulf Fishing Company. So, myself and uh... Billy and Rimmer, we were all working for the same company and we all were not happy with how everything was going. One of my customers called me and he said, man, can I just book this trip direct with you? Because I tried calling the office and I just can't deal with that guy over there anymore. When I heard that, it really made me stop and think that it's really not that hard to, to answer a phone. There's, there's no reason to be abrasive. It was one of those that we we're all gonna leave. And we all left and went in three separate directions. But we knew we were all good. We knew we could trust each other. And I was about to go build a website. Billy was, Remember was. We were both about to start our own companies. And I was like, man, this is kind of dumb. Why are we all going to spend the same amount of money when we're all going to refer each other? I mean, that was the inner circle. Why don't we all just get together and, and, and do it by ourselves? You know, do our own thing. It makes more sense for us to join forces. We'll be able to have a better budget for advertising. We'll be able to do more stuff as a team than we would individually. So that's how Mexican Gulf Fishing Company came about. Back then, all we wanted to do was go fishing and go run around and party and hang out, and goof off, and then go fishing again. Since we started it, we've kind of, I say, embraced the uh, business aspect of it but we have not lost sight of the having fun with great people doing what we want to do. Kevin actually, he's one of my oldest friends now. Never a dull moment. He can always make you laugh. Billy Wells is a business partner. He is my perfect uh, counterbalance, I guess is the best way to put it. I could not do what he does, to be 100%. I don't think he could do what I do every day. It works out very well. Teamwork, teamwork, everybody everywhere. Kevin Beach to me. <laughs> Kevin as a fisherman is just a stone cold killer. Ain't no time to play in. War, 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 war. This ain't a game, this ain't a game, this ain't a game, this is. The name of his boat is Pale Horse. Because beware the man that rides a pale horse, because death follows. I don't know that there's anybody else down here that's put more tunas across the gunnel of a boat than Kevin Beach. Billy and I fish very well together. He's like me, he's very competitive. I mean, he, he knows what he's doing, period. The term we use is bloodlust, you know, that killer instinct. If you're a deer hunter or a fisherman or a turkey hunter, when you have that instinct when, all right, cool, I'm supposed to go over here and halfway walk into that stand, you're like, nope, I bet it's gonna happen over here. And you just turn and do that. And you know, we call it bloodlust. He's got it. I have it. Um, all of our guys, before you get the keys, 
to one of our boats, you're gonna prove that you have it also. So the two biggest roadblocks we've had in, you know, Mexican Gulf and charter fishing was, you know, Katrina and the oil spill down here. You just didn't know what was gonna happen. You had no idea, you know, if they were gonna put the infrastructure back down in Venice and we were gonna be able to fish the waters that we know. Um, that was very, very, very scary for me personally. I just bought the, the first Gravois and you know billy had his boat and, and everything was just wrecked i mean it was just gone it was a clean slate not that we can't do anything else but this is what we we're born to do and then the oil spill happens and you just you didn't know the lowest point in my career was definitely when the bp oil spill happened that one was uh that one was tough. That was a real kick in the crotch. You know, we have invested a lot of money in the company. We have invested a lot of time, blood, sweat, and tears. You know, time away from the family, missing birthdays. Just name it. And to have all that just wiped out from under your feet um, sucked. And I remember it was about a week after where I'd actually been in the boat and seen some of the oil and stuff. One of my longtime customers called me and he said, hey, what, man, what, what's going on down there? What's, I mean, is it really as bad as you're saying on TV? And, uh, it's so like, man, it, it's pretty damn bad. I mean, it's, you go offshore, there's oil everywhere on the surface. And, and his next question is really, this was the defining moment of the lowest point of my career. He said, well, what are you gonna do? And I really, I mean, you, something like that happens and you think about right now, you're not really so much thinking about the future. And that was, that was the first thought I had of the future and it really, Man, it, it made me kind of sit down and think. So they finally, everything's cleared and, and the, the spill is done with. And uh, then you spend about, honest to God, three hours on the phone trying to convince people that yes, all the testing of the fish, everything is safe. You can come back down. And and I mean, it, it, it really, uh, it took a toll, it took a toll on a lot of people. Some people um, just folded up shop and got out. Uh, I guess we're too hard headed, stubborn, whatever. Thankfully, mother nature is incredibly resilient and is very good at dealing with all of mankind's disasters. And, and it's really bounced back down here and the, the effects don't seem to be bad. But that was definitely, without a doubt, my lowest point of my career. Even to this day, still get guys. Um, hey, is it safe to eat the fish? Hey, where was the horizon? Where was this? Literally, you talk about the horizon every single day. Yeah, yeah. Hey. When I finally realized that what we were doing with Mexican Gulf was actually working, I don't know, I guess I was kind of confused. I was kind of just <laughs> taken back. I, I, it, was, uh, it was a very, very prideful, I guess, feeling of accomplishment. There's no other way to put it, because that's what we set out to do. I've always felt that Kevin and I have put together I hate to 
sit here and say we're the best, but I can very well say that there's no one better. And uh, I've always felt that way about Mexican Gulf Fishing Company. Billy and I are gonna put, I say Billy and I, I'm lying. Billy and I and the rest of our current captains, it's a group deal. I mean, this is not a Billy and Kevin, we're you know kings type of show. We are a team, we are one unit. We pride ourselves on having the best product around. And I say product, you're gonna be on the best boats, the best equipment, and your whole experience from top to bottom is gonna be everything that you wish, hope, and dream for. Apparently we've done it. <laughs> uh, we're, we're there, we've achieved that success. And uh, now we just need to stay on top. <sighs> I hate talking about <laughs> doing things right, but it is what it is. Um, I'm proud, I'm very proud. We set out to accomplish one thing, and that's to be the best. And not my words, not Billy's words, other people's words. We have succeeded, and I love it. The biggest piece of advice I think I could give someone that wanted to come into this business is don't be the punk on the dock. Be humble, you know, uh, get to know the people. Don't just show up one day with a brand new flashy whatever with stickers all over your stuff and think you're gonna get respect. Show up on the dock and earn that respect. As far as advice for starting your own company, I think if, if your desire is there and you're willing to work hard, and you have a product that you believe in, just stay at it. Put your time in. No one starts first day as a captain. It just doesn't happen. You start as a deckhand. A lot of people start as boat washers before they even make it to deckhand. I was told when I wanted to start charter fishing, I was just a dumb little redheaded kid chasing his dream. And when you chase a dream, especially something like fishing or hunting, there's a lot of competition. And when you have a lot of competition, you're gonna to have to work 10 times as hard to make it happen for yourself. I will never tell anyone not to chase your dream, but you know what? You're gonna have sleepless nights. You're gonna have long hours. You're gonna have so much stress. And it's, you're gonna to wanna to just, you know, jump off the dock. But you know what, once you finally Get your feet on the ground, your claws in the ground. And you can look back at everybody that told you not to do it. <laughs> there is no better feeling than that. Unbelievable. <laughs>